Katie goes. The chief executive of Women's Aid knows she has a fight on her hands to ensure the domestic violence bill announced last week by Theresa May is worth the paper it's written on. With refugees under dire threat from changes to funding, Goes says the proposals must go beyond criminal justice if they are going to make a difference. We definitely want this bill to be a springboard for every part of government to make domestic abuse and the wider violence against women agenda front and center, and to ultimately tackle the root causes to prevent it happening in the future, says Goes. To do that it must encompass all areas of public policy that touch a survivor's life, such as health, housing and education. The draft bill includes more support for victims in court, tougher sentences in cases where children are involved, the creation of an independent domestic abuse commissioner and putting into law the scheme where police can disclose information about previous violent offending. Domestic Abuse Protection Orders DAPOs, would also allow police and courts to intervene earlier where abuse is suspected. The latter part of the bill has already raised eyebrows as suspects could be electronically tagged despite not yet being convicted of a crime, which some commentators have said could breach the civil rights. In response goes says, the problem we have at the moment is that there is not enough focus on the victims and police just do not have enough tools in the box to keep women safe and to tackle the perpetrators. Diplomatically, she adds, obviously we'll need to look at all the details of the specific measures proposed. They have to add up to a package of measures to ensure the police can offer the right response. Others, including the campaign group Sisters Uncut, who describe the bill as a dangerous distraction, have pointed out that refugees are facing a major crisis that the bill doesn't fully address. Separate proposals by the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government would see refugees and other forms of short-term supported housing removed from the welfare system. This would prevent those fleeing abusive partners from using the housing benefit to pay for refuge stays. On average, housing benefit, which is currently the final guaranteed source of income available to refugees, makes up 53% of the funding. Goes, who has been in post since July 2017, says refugees are right to be concerned and has been horrified by the postcode lottery she's seen in action while traveling around the country. He says that May's mention of sustainable funding for refugees in her International Women's Day speech was welcome but that the government must take the proposed housing benefit changes off the table. These risky proposals are coming on top of already very shaky foundations. This comes on top of years of cuts that have led many refugees to close the doors or operate on a shoestring. Another reason the changes are so risky is that the government is proposing a completely local approach to a service that has to be national for survivors to be safe. Two-thirds of women flee the local area to get away from an abusive family member, she says. Local councils are going to really struggle with a purely local approach. They are not going to have the incentives to do the right thing and make sure that the services are there for every survivor that needs them. She believes that the creation of a domestic abuse commissioner could be key if they have enough powers. This needs to be a commissioner with robust powers and resources to hold government and other agencies nationally, regionally and locally to account and to have the teeth and the strength to call out patchy a poor practice and actually have something done about it. Goes, 47, has campaigning in her blood. Her first taste was as a small child when she helped her mother lead a fight against a road being built nearby. A visit to Greenham Common followed but it was the racism she faced in the 70s and 80s. She was raised in Sussex by an Indian father and a white British mother, both of whom she says are feminists that left her with a raging sense of injustice and a passion for ensuring that quieter voices in society are heard. This is a momentous time and we have in this climate we can really tackle root causes a former barrister, she feels that she brings all the legal and campaigning experience she has gained from different fields, including electoral reform and human rights, to women's aid to put its ambitions into practice and hold the government to account. I know what the inside of a courtroom looks and feels like, I know how you gather the insights of experts by experience, which is very relevant to how you gather survivors' stories, which are crucial. Goes feels real change is coming. This is a momentous time and we also have the It's in this climate we can really tackle the root causes. She adds, once domestic abuse is brought out of the shadows, we can all play our part in tackling and ultimately preventing it in the first place.
Curriculum Vitae Age 47. Family, Partner, One Child. Lives, London. Education, Boundston Community College in Lansing, Sussex, Brighton, Hove. Career, Chief Executive, Women's Aid, 2010-17, Chief Executive, Electoral Reform Society, 2005-10, Director, British Institute of Human Rights, 2000.